Did you hear this? I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't get it. Are there any doctors in here? I went to the doctor about, like, having, like, a junky voice and, like, a junky, like, painful kind of nose, and I was getting dizzy and shit. I go to the doctor, they put that camera tube up my nose, they do an MRI of my head and the brain and shit, and they go, Oh no, you just have, like, cysts all over inside of your, uh, mucous cavities. I mean, they can cause those problems, but no, that's not what's happening. Take- get it- take them out! Take them out now! Get rid of them! I don't want them anymore! Right, you can't just take them out. No, I mean, I can get them. I can get surgery. It's so stupid, like... I almost look forward to when we're all just machines. Like, okay, keep our brains and keep our hearts because that's important. But honestly, ah, uh, Mr. Albertson, you've got a hernia. We're gonna have to fucking cut into you and cut all the flesh and shit and put all the mucous membranes. And then, like, pull it out because it's stuck there. And then, you know, that could be why your whole body hurts. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, Mr. Albertson, you have cysts in your nose and they're growing and they're huge and they're ugly and we need to cut them out with scissors. Whatever the hell they do. We need to be made out of steel, and platinum, and gold. None of this flesh bullshit. It's stupid, it gets in the way. Are you- I'm just kidding, my god. I, I can't- I, can I not go off on these comedy rants anymore? Would you let raccoons do surgery on you? Does the raccoon have a degree in surgery? Because yes, if that's the case. If a raccoon can get through med school, and get a degree in surgery, then why wouldn't you? I mean, they let Rocket Raccoon build a bunch of spaceships. You don't think that he could, if he wanted to, become a doctor or something? And I, I'm gonna pull back the jokiness because I'm actually gonna talk about a lot of serious things here. I'll talk to you as me, my real voice. That's how you know that we're getting serious. When I start talking like this. So, no more jokey uh, voice. This is my real voice. This is how I actually talk. All right, all right. It's time to mute the music. It's time for the music to stop. Uh, I need to say something. I need to talk about something. I gotta get this, like, other music out of my ear. Because I want to talk to you guys uh, very much uh, to you. Um, this has nothing to do, by the way, with the Discord changes. This is a completely separate thing that I'm announcing. So it's not like... I didn't plan on having, like, a bunch of huge Discord changes and then, like, And by the way, here we go! That just kind of happened this way. So as you know, those of you that have been on this channel for a long time, uh, some of you for more than a decade, which is crazy. You'll know that sometimes I do very large streams. Whether that's the dollhouse, whether that's uh, the Halloween stream, uh, Bugleberry shows up sometimes. He's a good friend of mine, by the way. Good friend of mine. Baseball, other stuff that I really want to do. It's starting, the bills are starting to add up. And over the next kind of arc of my career here, which, I'll be honest, I kind of want to make this like the, like the big one. What is happening now, is I've decided, going back and forth and talking with various people and various things, I am now signed with Evolved. I'm now under the Evolved umbrella. Evolved is the company that represents XQC in a talent agency way. Uh, also, Cutie Cinderella. I think Austin show and a, a shitload of esports players, right? So why, why, why are you doing this? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, wait a minute! This dude's now all of a sudden he's like signed with a talent agency. He blew up his Discord and like now what the fuck? What corporate Andy is taking over? Is that what's happening? No, just wait. Everybody, hold, everybody, settle down. Settle down. He's becoming a CS:GO pro. What if that was the announcement? <laughs> No, that would be so dumb. That would be so- that would be such a bad, dumb move for me. Because I don't play CSGO and I'm not very good. I would be stuck- it- what's below bronze? Is there a wood? Like, I would be wood rank in League of Legends, whatever it is. Essentially what this means is that there's now a lot of- there's gonna be a lot of opportunities now to tap into potential sponsorships and brands and money and ha ha making money from these different avenues and stuff, right? But, I gotta be really clear about this. The big shows cost a lot of money. And we struggled. I was I was actually thinking about having Jake, uh, Community Jake, come on here and talk about this with me because he's a lot more well-spoken than I am in a lot of things. But, I, I'll, I'll be very transparent with you guys. The streams that you see from time to time they rack up, and have racked up, hundreds of thousands of dollars in bills. 
over the last few years. Dollhouse alone was an unbelievable amount of money. And I have to start to think about, as I go into this kind of, this arc of my online entertainment life, or whatever you want to call it, e-clown world, I have to start to be able to pay for these things. And I could I maybe pay for them? Oh, I probably could. It would be pretty bad, though. I think over another few years of doing this, it might actually not be a good thing. So I'm opening the idea of being able to have a bigger dialogue with sponsors, be signed with a talent agency, so they can handle this shit. They come to me, they say, hey, dude, you want to do, for instance... <clears throat> You guys are- I've talked about it a thousand times, so I'm just gonna talk about it again. I want to do... Germa Rumble Live on Twitch, right? I want to do Germa Rumble Live live. And that show is going to be an absolute metric fucking huge amount of money. To be able to do stuff like that, I need to have the capital to be able to do it. And I'm going to only take sponsorships and only take money from places that I know that I'll have control. Streams are not going to change. It's uh, I'm not going to do like f fucking like laundry detergent tweets once a week. That's not happening. Guys, I tweet like five times a fucking year anyways. You think I'm really... Who wants me to do tweets for their business? But I have to start to think about this stuff. And I have to really start to take into consideration that there are companies that their whole goal is to make you money for stuff and sponsorships and bring brands in we it was a painful experience to get the dollhouse paid for a lot of behind the scenes stuff you guys don't know about that show that was very 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 difficult to have happen i want to try to eliminate that i want to make it easier on production on people that are showing up on myself to not have to kind of drag their heels into the ground trying to figure out how we're going to pay for a, a show and some of you might be saying, right, maybe not, maybe not some of you, maybe I'm just making you up, but that's fine, I want to say this anyways, is, well then why, just don't do the shows. Like, don't, just don't do the big shows. If they're this much of a, a financial kind of burden in a lot of ways, don't do them, just don't do them. Uh, we, we, we don't need them. I have to be very honest with you. If I wasn't doing the big shows, I would have quit two or three years ago. I would have retired years ago. And I made a very, very important statement over the last three or four years. The, if I'm not interested, I'm not going to stay. And yeah, the, the, the replacement stream joke, that was, that was a joke. But, you know, I have to really think about how I'm going to stay interested. And that is what interests me. Doing like Germa Rumble live is what I am interested in doing. Doing baseball is what keeps me interested. And if these things weren't here and I wasn't actively on a daily, weekly basis trying to, you know, get these shows off the ground, I probably would have stopped. He actually hates streaming. <laughs> he actually hates. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, I love streaming. I, uh, what are you talking about? You would have seen uh, the shows, the, the projects, the events. That's what I live for right now, right? But this stuff has to get paid for. And if, especially if I want to do them as more often like you've been seeing. It's been pretty much every, what, like three or four months? Every like few months, there's like something that's not, like just like kind of sitting in a, at like a desk stream, right? So what Evolved is going to do is they're going to come in and they're going to connect me to brands and to people that, hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, that stream that you want to do sounds like really fun and really cool. We'll give you money for it. That's the whole purpose of this. Also, let me make, I'm going to give you some hard lines here for you to understand. If I will not have complete direct control over everything, I will not take a sponsor. A lot of people, when, when they saw the Coinbase sponsor, they thought that it was like, holy shit. Oh my God, the stream is ruined. He's going to be shilling coins and NFTs. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Let me be very clear with everybody. That is not ever going to happen. <clears throat> if I do not have exact direct control over everything, it's not happening. I'll say no thank you. If you see a sponsor on this channel over the coming months, 
it's because of a few reasons. Reason number one. Fuck it. <laughs> Cha-ching! Reason number two. Um... What was it? Oh, um, paying for shows! No, I mean, I'm just fucking around, but seriously. Uh, reason number one, and pretty much the only reason, is to make money to pay for the big stuff. And the big stuff is very expensive. I'm not trying to make a shitload of money from sponsors to take and put in my personal bank account. I, I want to pay for shows. I want to be able to pay the people on the shows and be able to do them without stressing myself out financially or sitting there in the middle of like our dollhouse production going okay we fucking need money or this isn't happening i want that to not happen ever again <clears throat> and we'll see going forward uh it's gonna be it's gonna see how much i like it i'm very very happy with what they've said so far and i hopefully the relationship like in a business wise can flourish and evolved can come in and help out this channel and you guys will see what they do another important thing to understand is i if i'm gonna do a huge show that's gonna cost tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars i, I don't want that to be a financial burden on the community right like i don't want to have to be like oh shit well i really should like really need some more subs this month otherwise uh it's gonna be hard to do uh, the, it's gonna be hard to do with, like, the, the, the playground stream. We get a bunch of playground equipment, and we do, like, uh, Olympic-level playground equipment, uh, uh, competitions. Like, right? But that's not happening. That I just made that up. Uh, but that's my, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to, I would rather it be a sponsor comes in, drops a bunch of money, and it's, I don't have, it's not like the burden is not put on either me or me needing to kind of tell everybody, Hey, uh, you know, so, like, I need, like, can you guys get me to, like, fucking 20k? No, because I don't want to do that. Which makes, hey, excuse me, all, all advertisers, excuse me, all advertisers, please pay attention. Don't you think that makes this, this channel way more fucking valuable? Wait, he's only had, wait, he's only had one sponsor ever? Oh my, we can get on there. Give him 10 million, give him 20 million, give him 30 million, right? Like, uh, that's pretty valuable. What are you, he expects 20 million dollars. No. <laughs> He's so fucked up. But I'm only going to start to take, I'm going to take sponsors from things that I really want to take sponsors from. And I'm going to have control. And Evolved has been very, very upfront. They said, dude, we get it. This music, this has been the music that's been on the whole time? What is this, like, church music? This is televangelist inspirational bullshit. <laughs> it really does feel like I'm a televangelist. I am asking you, I am set talking about money and where money's going to come from to the to the church, to the congregation. You know, I'm sorry, everybody. What I have to start to think about here is how we're going to make the church grow even bigger than it is now. And we do that by talking about this company here, as you see. I can't, I don't want to make a joke about a sponsor because like I'm like sponsor Andy now, right? Oh, oh, that's off limits. Can't talk about that. I can't bring up this company in case, just in case they ever are interested. People like, okay. What Evolve doesn't know. Shh, don't tell them. Uh, what they don't know is like they're going to come to me with sponsor people. Hey, we got this deal for you. Maybe it'll make you a really good amount of money. You can take this and then like, oh, that show in fucking June is going to be awesome. Okay, sure. Um, what was the company again? Oh, let me let me give you a list uh, of all the companies that are interested. Okay, well, I told that company to, that they suck. I told that company to fuck off. I said, fuck that company. I said, this company makes disgusting dog shit products. Um, I can't use any of these. Yeah, unless you're coming at me with, like, Hamburger Helper. Uh, or, like, McDonald's. Those are the only two companies I've ever spoken highly of. As this channel kind of changes, and as this channel <coughs> evolves... You're gonna, there'll be some things you'll see that are changing. And like I said, I'm trying to keep myself interested. I'm trying to keep myself connected to the space as best as I can. You can't minus two the new agency that has signed me. That's not how it works. Uh, but as we go forward here, I need to find ways to make it so I can disconnect. Because you guys have known this for the last almost, almost 11 plus years of being around. I disconnect. I don't interact that much. And that's very much by design. 
I need to disconnect. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do it for this long. Um, the constant kind of stress and the constant awareness of having a community this big is my way of handling it is to not, to really disconnect from it a lot of times. And I mean, like I said, I don't tweet that much. I'm not on social media that much. So in the spaces that I'm, you know, officially a part of, that I officially own, going forward here too, not just on Discord, on Twitch, on, you know, the YouTube space, on like the sponsor space, I got to get it under control because I'm not really that much of a participant. Please play, dude. The edibles are kicking in. Oh, shit. That guy, that dude, all right. That one guy was like ready for house builder and is pissed because we've been sitting here for 25 plus minutes talking about like the state of the channel and the community and shit. And this guy is sitting here sinking into his couch and like starting to, the world is zoning out. And he's sitting there going, please pick up the fucking cement truck and just dump the cement, dude. This is too much for my fucking brain. What do you got to sign? What do you mean a talent? He's evolving? No, I don't want an evolved version of this fucking weirdo. No, no, I'm leaving the community. I just, that person just left the community. That person thinks I'm like turning into like a new uh, Pokemon or something. Like I just fucked it. All right. TLDR. Sponsorships are going to become a thing now. I want to pay for big streams. Some of the biggest streams I've ever done, even more large in scale than the dollhouse, are currently underway. I'm gotta, I got, I gotta believe. You fucking criticize me. You're gone. I will ban you fucking permanently with the click of one of my fucking fingers. So watch it. All right, house builder. This is not like house flipper. It's different. You build the houses rather than flip them. This game might be dog. You know what? We're turning over a new leaf. Because at some point, you know, you gotta can't just say that about anything that I come across. Corporate Andy. Let's go. This is an igloo house. It's easy. This is a mud house, and it's easy. Hmm. It's the only two I can do. do the igloo? Alright, we gotta learn how to play. It's so bright. I think I'm gonna need to put on some HD glasses. Some brightness reducing glasses. Thankfully, I'm open to sponsorships now. I wonder what kind I would put on. I wonder what brand I would be using. God, really need them now. Oh shit, okay, cool. New skill available. Oh my god. This is like the Path of Exile skill tree. <laughs> this is bigger than Path of Exile. Ooh, the bonfire is dying. You have to throw more sticks into the fire or you will freeze. Wait, we can- I can die? <laughs> I have a health meter? Wait, get more sticks in there! How much should I use? Wait, am I using way too much? Oh shit, I'm like- I'm the guy that you don't want to survive with. Yo, man, I got- If we burn a hundred sticks, we'll get a huge fire and it'll be really warm. Eat that guy first. Your character's arm is identical to a character in The Incredibles. I, I've never seen The Incredibles. I know that's like saying I've never seen Star Wars, right? The last, what was the, I think the last Disney Pixar movie that I saw was Meet the Robinsons. And the only reason why I watched that movie is because I thought the bowler hat guy was funny and cool. And like I wanted to see his scenes only. In fact, now that I'm remembering this, I think I just went to like YouTube and typed in all the bowler hat guy scenes. And didn't even watch the movie. That's it. Oh, cool. I did it. I got five stars. I did it in 13 minutes. I ran 986 miles. Ooh, wait. Stay here. Nice. This is a pizza oven. The first step is to lay stone foundations. Look around for stones in appropriate size. Collect the required amount and put them in the right places. Alright, so here's a stone. Okay, so I just get rocks. Using a player sense. Wait, I... Oh, I, ha I have like... I have like Hitman vision. Okay, this is just MMO quest without the quest givers. I just have to go get like a hundred rocks and just go bring a hundred rocks here. I actually kind of like it. It's just arc. I mean, it's it's not really arc. This is probably more like lost arc than it is arc. 
This is a baby sensory game. <laughs> it kind of feels like it. Good one. Thanks. I know that game's very relevant right now. I'm a relevant game, relevant gamer Andy. What? Oh, I gotta cut it? Are you serious? Why am I talking like this is some huge innovation? Somebody just said fuck SNL and the whole cast. What? What are you talking about? What, what are you, why are you saying that? This is Germa 985. This is German stream. What? What are you, why are you saying that? What happened? What are you doing? What happened? Why are you saying that about I what does that have to do with what does that have to do with me? Rip the SNL sponsorship. I got it. You know what? What are some sponsorships that I really would actually want? What should I what how, what should I get? What should I try to get? What do you guys think? Something that makes sense to me. McDonald's. I would do that. Yeah, I would. We I literally did that last stream and this is before doing anything with like a sponsorship or anything. I, I literally did a, a full like 10 minute McDonald's ad. I would do it. Yeah, that's a good one. Smarties. Guys, if you think that Smarties is going to pay some oh, random Andy. dickhead streamer like me to do anything, like you're out of you're out of your mind. HD TV presents the Saw stream. <laughs> you know what's funny though? I mean, don't be surprised, not necessarily that exact company, but that's kind of funny to me in its own way. Now, Frank's Burgers presents the diaper stream. Like, um, you know, you, do you know what you're signing up for here? What the fuck is going on? It's a game where you, you build houses. What do you, what do you want me to tell you? All games and all movies and all TV shows, you could just say, like, what the fuck is going on? It's something otherworldly or something that, like, well, this is not otherworldly, but look, you could say that about the Muppets. Like, okay, do you go, do you turn the channel and you get on, like, Muppets Take Manhattan and go, what the fuck is going on? Who are these, like, little weirdos? Who's that little green guy? No, it's like a piece of media. You just, you're gonna, you could, you'll figure it out. Somebody will help you. You can enjoy it. Wait, wait, what the fuck's going on here? That bear, that bear can talk? Why does he sound like Yoda? Ah, uh, 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 two voice Andy. How many clay balls do you think you could fit in a Subway sandwich? <laughs> one? I would assume maybe one? Well, that would just be the sandwich. It would just be two pieces of bread and a thing of clay. Don't eat clay, by the way. Like, honestly, I think it actually, people were saying it's like, don't put it in your, it's like actually fucking horrible. I don't remember why, but I know it's just like, don't fucking do that. Don't put it in your mouth. What's the actual, like, reason why? It has, like, there's a certain disease? Really? Yeah. Yeah, don't fuck around with that shit. Seriously, don't. Clay from Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, that's where, my, that's where clay is from. <laughs> do we have a whole generation of kids that think that clay is from Minecraft? We don't, right? What would, even, what would be funnier if... What would even be funnier if is if kids hold on if it's kids thought redstone was from Minecraft You know, what's funny. I'm one of those kids. I Thought I thought that that redstone was just like a jokey thing that was made Just made up for the game. It's not it is wait it is so what what are you doing to me? Why are you making me look like an idiot read a clock? There guys there are no clocks where I am. There's not there's no electricity Lock debacle. Yeah, I have not really taken any THC since that. So when I did that, and I looked back and I watched the clip, and I knew how desperate I was to try to just like get the right time. So this is what I did. I, I watched that footage back, and my I did the thing that you go like this, but you just can't believe it, and you're so pissed because you look so stupid. I did one of these. I went like this, watching it. I went. You know, you would wipe your fucking face because you can't, like, you just can't believe it. You're just sitting there going. That's what I was doing, and I didn't want to have that reaction again. And because I was looking at the chat, and here's the thing everybody in the chat saying, this has to be bullshit. This has to be made up, right? 
Like, there's no way you are doing this not on purpose, right? It's like, fuck, I just look so stupid. But then I also had this same kind of epiphany a little bit here. I thought about this the other day, and this is a really interesting topic. I haven't been... Now this, again, you're gonna say, what does this have to do with reading a clock? That's like basic human knowledge. I haven't been in a classroom in almost 20 years. And I think about that a lot. I remember being in class and like the memory is so fleeting to me. It's such a distant memory of doing essays and problems and tests and I, it's, I, it's, it's a, the, it's a fleeting memory, and that's weird to think about, because I remember like being up all night, like fuck, I gotta cram for this test. That's so long ago. But memory is a weird thing because that those memories from like 15, 20 plus years ago, they're like, they're like stopping existing. They're being, like my hard drive is writing over that information, in a way. Which is really bizarre to think about. Trust me when I tell you, as somebody that's turning 37 this year. Once your hard drive starts to write over information from 20 years ago, is when you're gonna start to look around and be like, what? Wow. He's right. Yeah, no, it, it's a weird feeling, because I, I didn't have this feeling back in my, let's say, mid-20s, right? In my mid to late 20s, it was kind of, that was still not necessarily fresh in my mind, but it was still close. I'm approaching that period where being in school is a distant memory. How many childhood memories do you think your brain deleted to replace with shitty internet memes? You know, that's like kind of unfortunate if you really think about it. That's really kind of unfortunate. Unfortunately, you're on your own this time. There are no shops or any civilization here. You managed to bring the tools on a pickup truck. Stop by building a trapper's house from the foundations. I thought they weren't gonna help me. The, okay, that's like if Dark Souls would it be like, mm, here we are, Firelink Shrine. You're on your own, motherfucker. Good luck. It's Dark Souls. It's hard as shit and we don't help you. And then I walk up to the first enemy and I take a swing and the game <coughs> pauses. And there's three, one, two, three on the screen images with different paragraphs under each image explaining how to swing the weapon. That's what they're doing here. I, leave me alone. Which, look, I gotta be honest, I said this the other day. I said this when I'm playing the VR stuff too. Like, the video game tutorial, just tell me how to, just, do I, do you, do I really need to be told how to swing the weapon? It's left click in every single video game. Like, c can you just give me like a cheat sheet with all the buttons on it? I don't know why we still have to go, and remember, right click is aim. You don't have to tell me that. Like, just show it to me. What if it's your first game ever? It's not- it's- it's- This should be- we need to have, like, a- I don't know, why would that be your first game ever? It's not. There should be a tutorial game. Yeah, there should be. Like, Steam should come up with an app that you can download that's just, like, getting started with gaming. And you put- just have every game follow the same fucking basic rules, and you can open up this, like, Steam how-to. Remember, most games have left click as their means of, uh, of attacking and do, or, or, or shooting. And then the game can come up, it could be like, here we go, here's the tutorial, here we go! Instead of spending like six plus hours tutorialing me, just please refer to the Steam Workshop app tutorial if you don't know how to use a computer. And then we can shave the first six fucking hours of just stretching to add cutscenes to tutorials to make it worth showing so the developers don't feel like uh, we're gonna have- we have to spend two hours telling people how to play the game. We have to make up like a fucking story that they can play through in the tutorial. They don't have to do that anymore. Just get to the good stuff! Get to the meat! Alright, what the fuck am I doing? I need to read this. Please refer to the Steam Tutorial app. Gaming! For beginners! I would probably flip out right now. Yeah, imagine if that's what it told me. Here it is. All right, here's my best chainsaw impression. It's 
beer type of craft beer? I don't really drink craft beer. I don't drink really beer at all. Every time I drink beer, I take two or three sips out of it when it's really cold. And I go, ooh, mmm, oh, that's good. Oh, man, guys, oh, mine's good. What'd you get? Oh, mine's the, uh, mine's the orange peel. The orange peel, what's it? I, I don't have any fucking idea, I just picked one. Oh, it's the orange peel IPA from, um, from Germany, yeah. And then it gets kind of a little warmer, and I, I don't like to drink it, but I have to. Because it's like, you don't, you can't, like, order a full beer in, like, the nice glass. Take two sips of it and just stare at it. Like, I don't, yeah, I, you have to get at least halfway done. So, um, also, well, I don't know why everyone's so weird. Why are we so weird? Humans are a weird group of animals. I know we, like, want other people to enjoy the things we enjoy. But, but do we really have to say that they, that you think the ketchup is house-made? Like, mm, oh, dude, no, this ketchup's house-made. It's, no, it's not. It never is. I wonder how many times, like, a restaurateur has heard that come from somebody, and they just open up the fridge, and there's just bottles of, like, Heinz ketchup in there. I've never heard that. What are you talking about? Everybody says that. Like, oh, this beer? Oh, mm-hmm. I, mm, this is so good. Do you see where it's from? It's from, this is from Italy. <laughs> Italian beer. Ranch, restaurant ranch. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh, by the way, Ranch Andy's in chat. I got a bone to pick with you. I got a bone to pick with you guys. So a few days ago on this stream, we talked about how, oh, mayonnaise, ew, yuck, mayo. All you ranch enjoyers, I think need to take a step back and evaluate how you feel about mayonnaise. Because if I, if you think that mayonnaise is gross, you better think that ranch is gross too. Because that shit is like kind of disgusting if you think about it, just like if you think about mayonnaise. Unseasoned ranch. Uh-huh. <laughs> unseasoned ranch, that's so funny. Excuse me, sir, would you like some unseasoned ranch, please? Or fucking mayonnaise? Ranch actually tastes good. No, ranch tastes like ranch. Mayo makes everything else taste better. Mayo brings out flavors. Ranch is ranch. I'm actually one of those uh, Giga Chad blue cheese enjoyers instead of ranch. I choose blue cheese every time. If there's a choice between blue cheese or ranch for like a dipping sauce for something, I'm gonna choose blue cheese. And I know that's, uh, I can understand why people think blue cheese is gross, but it doesn't matter to me. I just, it, I know, don't stop saying Giga Chad. You guys say it all the time. You don't think I'm gonna like at least absorb some of that? Should I like do an eating stream where I like eat stuff and write it for you? You want my real dog shit takes on everything? What would, what, what's like a, a one that you'd want to see? Do dog sausages, dog treats. <laughs> That's so stupid. Dog treat tier list live. So many people do like the taste test stuff. Imagine if I had like milk bones and like dog sausages and like canned dog food and shit and I sat there and I did that with special guest Otto. Otto has to give his tier list and how we do that is I, I take a few dog treats. I break them up so they're really small, right? So he doesn't get like too much. So break them up to the little small taste pieces, put them out in a row far enough away from each other so, that, so he has to decide. I hold him back at like the other end of the room and go, okay, go Otto and see what he goes for first. That is now elevated on the tier list. So then that's like up at like S tier. We put that next to another one, right? That he also likes and we make a, an, a dog treat tier list. He's saying this, but he's never gonna do it. No, don't you understand? Always remember the things I say because two years from now, I'm gonna spend $40,000 on this as a project. You know what I mean? Like just wait a year or two, there'll be like a $70,000 stream where this happens. No, but the thing is, I wouldn't just do the dog, like, food tier list. Like, in the middle of that stream, Macho Man Randy Savage has to show up and, like, eat out of the can with his hands and go like, Ooh, yeah, and then leave. And, like, I, have to, I just have to blow money on that stream, right? Like, I have to, somebody has to come in and do something weird. Or, like, I have to, like, be like, come here, Otto, go! And I have to, like, fall out of my window. Like, it can't just be a stream where we just do something, like, basic like that. Do an ocean water tier list? Like the Atlantic versus the Pacific? 
You want to go, go to like the Red Sea and be on camera? All right, here we are. Let's find out where this fits. <laughs> oh, oh, this one's kind of, this one tastes a, a little bit different. This one's a little nutty. Let me tell you, that's a way for a YouTuber to write off a huge vacation, okay? So just be aware of that. Oh, where? I gotta, I'm gonna travel the whole world to take sips out of different bodies of water. Isn't that crazy? I have to go to 30 countries. Oh, it's for the video, man. <laughs> Crayon, you just made me spit on my monitor. Crayon flavor tier list. Like, I think they're flavors. I don't think that they're just like fun names for colors. And actually talk, make them out of something that's edible. Like, have a fake box of like 500 crayons made, lay them all out and eat them. And, but they're actually made out of like an edible material that I can eat. That would freak out a ton. A lot of people would be fucking freaked out by that big time. I actually might get like a message from Twitch like, hey, um, what are you doing? Stop doing this. Fortnite vape stream. <laughs> I will do that stream one day. Before I retire for real, I'm gonna do the vape guy playing Fortnite joke. I'm gonna. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'm gonna do that stream. <laughs> the daycare stream. <laughs> okay. I'll talk. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it because it's stupid. <clears throat> Community Jake told me also that this is probably a bad idea. Let's not do it. And I was like, okay, fine. <sighs> there was a stream idea a while back where I announced to the stream that I was operating a daycare. And that, guys, uh, you know, I'm just trying to make some extra money on the side here. Uh, I'm operating a daycare. And uh, I'm going to be operating it. And we got uh, these children here by. I'm going to be taking care of them. And it was going to be, like, like a half dozen, like, babies in, like, baby things back here. And I was going to periodically, because they were going to be those babies that, like, made the sounds and stuff. And, like, I had to go feed them. And it was going to be like, look, I'm feeding the babies thing. Where it went off the rails is some crazy stuff was going to happen where, like, I, a bear was going to fucking attack my office. And I was going to have to, like, defend the babies from a bear and shit. And, like, crazy stuff was going to happen. I was going to have to, like, fight for them and fight against them. They were going to, like, be able to vote for what I was going to play next on stream. No, not real babies. Like, ba like dolls. What are you talking about? And I have to, like, defend them from, like, a, oh, a, a bear's coming in! And I fight the bear and like, and maybe one of the babies like gets up and like attacks the bear and shit. But it got, it got to a point where I was like, you know what? This probably isn't, this probably isn't a great idea. And Community Jake is just like, yeah, let's like leave this one on the cutting room floor because like, I, I don't think that this is going to work. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? This probably is going to be hard to make work. Who would possibly worry about it being real? Well, not that it was real, but I don't know. Especially if like the babies were going to be back here like making noises while I was sitting here like talking and like streaming. I mean, look, let me be honest, is that as bad as me wanting to do another one that got shut down? Another one that got shut down? Is I wanted to do the second Catboy stream, and I wanted to shit in the litter box that was in the corner of the room. Is that, is that the same? Is that just as bad? <laughs> you, you guys don't know. There's a lot of ideas that pass through, like a small treatment, that me and Community Jake will sit in a call for like an hour. And we'll be like, yeah, man, okay, so the, for the second Catboy stream, what if there was like just cat toys around the room and I'm like running around chasing them? Maybe like chat can pick on like what toy I play with. Like that, well, there'll be a big cat tree that I climb up and like sleep on and just sit there for like 10 straight minutes. Oh, and there'll be like a litter box too. And like maybe I'll go over to the litter box and maybe I'll shit in the litter box. And it's just like, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute, Jeremy. Back, back up for a second. What do you want to do? And I'm like, well, no, I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to think of like things that like funny shit to do. But I wouldn't actually, guys. I wouldn't have actually shit in a litter box on stream. It would be like I would just go be a cat at, in the litter box. And like that would be and like that would be it. Like, like oh, okay, we're gonna go to BRB. He's like using the litter box. A few years ago you, you talked uh, on uh, on the on Critical's podcast about the courtroom thing. What was that? Alright, I can talk about that. Uh, I was gonna go on trial for killing Santa Claus. And we were gonna have a courtroom and I was gonna be on trial for it. But it wasn't gonna be like a normal court, it's gonna be like kinda like a magical court. And Santa's 
lawyer was gonna be like sing his prosecution at the jury and shit and I was gonna get pissed off and it was gonna be like a magical Christmas stream where I'm just this evil fucking awful person unfortunately I kind of ran out of time because that was also right in the period where I was gonna start to move that was right before moving to Vegas and the you killed Santa routine wasn't really relevant anymore and like a year goes by, two years go by, and I think in the chat I made jokes about, oh, uh, you know, the legal system sure does take a long time or something, but it never ended up happening. Has it been three hours? All right, let, let, let's move to uh, the AI stuff. What would you like to do? Story. Okay, let's start a story. You are lost in the woods. Your name is... Edward... Third. Your father is Edward the Great and he has sent you into the woods to claim a relic that has been lost for over 200 centuries. You have a rusty knife and a trusty sword. Begin. As you walk deeper into the woods, you see an old man sitting on a rock. He looks like he's sleeping. You approach him cautiously, but as you get closer, he suddenly sits up, staring at you with bloodshot eyes. Dear old man, I'm looking for a relic that has been lost in time. The old man laughs. Ha! <laughs> That's exactly what I am. I am the relic master of the forest. And I know every relic in this forest by heart. What do you want from me? Holy shit. Do you know where the heart of Edward is? He laughs again. Of course I do. <laughs> it's right here in my pocket. But before you can grab it, he vanishes. You're standing near a dead tree. There's a large hole in the ground nearby and a wooden stake sticking out of the ground. Lie down in the hole. On my back. A moment later, you hear a strange sound coming from below you. As you look down, you see the old man sitting on the ground, smiling at you. Hello there, he says. Wait, am I on top of him? Where did you go? How did you disappear so quickly? Oh, that was just a little trick I learned when I was young. I can disappear and appear at will. Can you teach me? Sure, he says. Come on down and we'll have some fun. You descend into the hole, which seems to be a small cave. The old man follows you in. I'm going to be very cautious. As soon as you enter the cave, the old man grabs his pocket watch and starts ticking loudly. Suddenly, a huge creature bursts... <laughs> Suddenly, a huge creature bursts out of the ground behind you. It looks like a cross between a bull and a bear. Watch out! It turns around and sees the old man. It snarls and charges at him. The old man jumps out of the way just in time, and the creature falls on its side, stunned. Kill it! You leap forward and swing your sword at the beast, cutting off one of its legs. It howls in pain and lunges at you. You dodge the attack and stab it in the eye with your sword. Old man, grab me the holy water from my backpack. You run back towards the old man who is still holding the pocket watch in his hand. He takes it out of his pocket and flicks it open. Suddenly he screams and drops the watch. <laughs> pick up the watch. You pick up the watch. The watch is cracked and covered in dirt, but inside you can see a tiny fragment of white bone. You take the watch out of the pocket and put it back in your bag. What does this watch do? Nothing special, the old man says. Just a good luck charm. You leave the cave and head deeper into the woods. You are now in the clearing where you found the relic. <laughs> Why did he scream? Why did you scream after opening the pocket, the watch? Oh, that's just something that happens sometimes, the old man says. It's not important. Just don't open it again, okay? You are standing in a clearing to the west is a small hill. Open the pocket watch. 
Suddenly, the old man disappears. You feel yourself falling through the air, and then everything goes black. You are lying on the ground with the old man kneeling beside you. He's holding a flask of water. Where are we? We're in the forest, he replies. I had to bring you here because I couldn't find any other way to contact you. Why? Because if anyone else finds out about this place, they might try to come here. Is it an, how nice is it? It's a time machine. What year is it? It's 187, it's 1827, he replies. How long have I been unconscious? About two weeks. You sit up. Thank you for saving me, old man. Open the pocket watch. This is, this might be the relic. This is the relic. The old man screams and drops the watch. You open the watch and see a piece of white bone. You close the watch and put it back in your bag. You stand up and walk over to the old man. Is that the relic? Yes, he says. That is the relic. You take the relic from him and put it in your bag. Now let's get out of here. So that's the heart of it. Of, 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 I don't know. What's the name of the guy? Of Edward? <laughs> Edward's heart? That's the heart of Edward. Can't believe it. The heart of Edward is in my hands. Father will be most pleased. No, the old man shouts. This is evil. We must destroy it. But why? I've been searching for this for years. Because it's evil. What makes it evil? It's cursed, he replies. If you open it, it will take away all of your memories. And then you won't remember anything. You hold the relic in both hands. Open it. Suddenly, you're standing in a dark room. You are holding a glowing blue orb. You look around the room and notice that the walls are covered in strange writing. You read. The first man, Adam, created in the image of God, was alone in the Garden of Eden. Keep reading. Until Eve, the second woman, was brought forth from his rib. Adam gave her to his son, Cain. Adam gave her to his son Cain as a wife. Cain slew his brother Abel and fled from the Garden of Eden. Keep reading. Then, Enoch the third man walked with God and was taken up to heaven without dying. Enoch returned to earth and told his people that the world would end. After many years, the great flood destroyed the world and Noah built an ark to save his family from the waters. The ark floated for 40 days and nights until it reached dry land. Keep reading. The ark landed on Mount Ararat in Turkey. God commanded Noah to build a tower to reach heaven. Noah obeyed and constructed the Tower of Babel, Babel, the first human structure ever made. Is this all real? Is this, this happen? Keep reading. But Satan, the god of this world, saw the, the hunters were we going too far. And tried to destroy them. So he caused them to speak different languages and they began to fight amongst themselves. It's not, keep reading. God scattered the humans and scattered their language. When Moses led the Hebrew slaves out of Egypt, he was given the Ten Commandments. Moses returned to Israel and built the the, tabern, the tabernacle, the first temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> King Solomon built the first temple and the Ark of the Covenant was placed in it. Solomon also built the second temple, which stood until the Romans destroyed it in 70 A. I wonder where Satan is. Satan was at this point. <laughs> Satan was banished from heaven and cast down to hell. In the last days, Satan will return to earth and the Antichrist will reign over the world. The Bible is a book of prophecy. Keep reading. The Antichrist will be a false prophet who will rise to power in the Middle East. His name is Muhammad and he will rule the world. 
At the end of his reign, Jesus Christ will return to earth and defeat the Antichrist? What? What the fuck are you talking about? What? Jesus will establish his kingdom on earth and rule as king of kings for a thousand years. After that, Satan will be released from prison and tempt... What is happening here? Say... This doesn't sound accurate. It is true that the Antichrist will arise. He will be defeated by Jesus. Also, the Antichrist will not be the only false prophet. There will be others. I don't think this is what happened. Who is talking right now? It's me, the old man says. I'm telling you what happened. You continue <laughs> reading. Aren't I reading this off of a wall? After the thousand years are up, Satan will be loosed from his prison and will deceive mankind once more. Keep reading. No, I, I don't want him to keep reading. I'm telling him to keep reading. Hey, yo, yo, keep reading. This time, he will be able to use the powers of a fallen angel called the Beast. The Beast will rule the world for seven years before being defeated by Jesus. When Satan is imprisoned again, the devil will be chained for a thousand years. Is Thor in this? Yes, the old man says. He is mentioned several times in the Bible. You continue reading. At the end of the millennium, Satan will be loosed once more and will tempt mankind to rebel against God. <laughs> Can you skip to the part with Elmo? No, the old man says. There isn't much left. During the rebellion, the Antichrist will be killed by the Archangel of Michael. Michael will be rewarded for his bravery and become the leader of the angels. <laughs> Is Elmo in this? No, the old man says. He does not appear in the Bible at all. Oh, okay. Phew. Elmo's not in the Bible. What about... What about Kermit? The Frog. Kermit the Frog is not mentioned in the Bible. You continue reading. Okay. Please... <laughs> Please finish the story. After that, Satan will be chained for a thousand years. All right, he's stuck. Grab the book out of his hands. I am finished, the old man says. You can stop reading now. You take the book out of his hands and put it back in your bag. <laughs> Wait, what about Elmo? You're now standing in the clearing where you found the relic. You're standing in the clearing where you found the relic. To the west is a small hill. To the east is a path leading north into the forest. You shout, where is Elmo? Suddenly, the old man appears. Where is Elmo, you ask? He's gone. I sent him away. You reach into your bag and pull out the pocket watch. <laughs> Fuck this Elmo-less timeline. I'm out of here. Suddenly, you're standing in a dark room. You're holding a glowing blue orb. You look around the room and notice that the walls are covered in strange writing. You read, The first man, Adam, created in the image of God, was alone in the Garden of Eden. Read the part about Elmo. Until Eve. Come on. You didn't, you can't give me like Elmo, like is like Eve or something. <laughs> the book of Elmo. Run out of the cave. You run out of the cave. And I'm standing in the clearing where you found the relic. The west is a small hill. Head towards the hill. You climb the hill and are standing at the top. To the north is a path leading south into the forest. The east is a... To the north is a path leading south into the forest. To the east is a path leading north into the forest. And to the west is a path leading north into the forest. Ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. It is buried under the hill. You ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. 
Explain to the old man. You explain to the old man time travel. Time travel is impossible, he says. Only God can do that. That makes me God, then. That makes you God? You ask the old man where to go. We need to find the relic. It's buried under the hill. That makes me God, then, you reply. Why? <laughs> because I am the one who sent you back in time, he says. We need to find the relic. We're combining like three or four play like realities. Dig under the hill for the relic. Are we going to find tw two of them? You dig under the hill for the relic. We need to find the relic. Find the relic. We're, we're in a loop. You find the relic. We need to find the relic. We need to find the relic. Start shaking the old man. You start shaking the old man. We need to find the relic. We need to find the relic. It's over. We're stuck in an infinite loop now. Do a new story about Elmo. Okay. All right, that was fun. New story. You're searching for Elmo, one of the most beloved children's television personalities. He has since gone into hiding. No, that's weird. Into hiding in an undisclosed bunker. Somewhere in the ant... Oh, I just fucking burped. I'm sorry. It is your job to track down Elmo and interrogate him. Okay, your first stop will be the National Archives. You've been granted access to the files there. You should find some useful information about Elmo's background and history, including a file on his family tree. You pull up his family tree to further investigate. Elmo's father was named William T. Sesame. His mother was Margaret M. Sesame. They were both born in Brooklyn, New York. They had three children together, a son named Peter J. Elmo was the oldest of the bunch, followed by a daughter named Sarah Elizabeth. The last child was a boy who was given the name Thomas James Elmo. Unfortunately, he died before he could say his first word. After the death of their youngest child, Elmo's parents moved to San Diego, California, where they started a baked goods store. This business did well enough that they eventually opened a second location in Los Angeles. They retired from the bakery after 20 years and decided to move back to Brooklyn to be close to the family. The day they arrived in Brooklyn, they found that their home had burned down. So they went back to San Diego, bought a new house, and started all over again. After five years of running the business, Elmo's parents sold it and moved back to Brooklyn. Elmo's parents never spoke of their time in California or why they returned to Brooklyn. Unfortunately, the house was burned down when they went back to Brooklyn. So they went back to San Diego. This time they bought a house that was still standing. When they got back to San Diego, they learned that their house had burned out again. And this time they couldn't afford to rebuild. What the fuck? No. We're looking for Elmo here. Okay. All right. So now we know the backstory. Knowing the backstory, I ventured to the Antarctic. Looking for clues on Elmo's whereabouts. I located a small, this music's gotta go, it sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck, but you know what I mean. All right, new song, here we go. This is literally the Frankenstein plot. I located a small deep cave within the ice. Inside the cave, I found Elmo sitting on a rock with his arms crossed. He didn't look happy to see me. Who are you? Stared back into those soulless eyes. Muttered the phrase. I'm going to. I'm, I'm not George fucking R. R. Martin, okay? I'm getting too into this. Dead. Retribution. 
He began to shake. No, no, don't hurt me. Please, don't hurt me. Why should I not hurt you? Because I'm innocent. <laughs> I'm innocent, I swear. Tell me everything. <laughs> this is fucked up. Tell me everything, Elmo. All right, all right, I'll tell you. But you <laughs> have to promise not to kill me. Of course I answer, but I will take you prisoner until I can figure out what to do with you. So spill it. What did you do? What did you do to my friend Gwen? What are you talking? Gwen said she saw you leave her house? What the fuck? What made you flee to Antarctica? It's a long story, just trust me. I didn't do anything wrong, I was just minding my own business. And this lady came along and told me she wanted to buy my life. What does that mean, Elmo? Well, let me start at, at the beginning. <laughs> I can't do this fucking voice. <laughs> Come on, Gwen. I was walking through Central Park one day when this woman approached me. <laughs> she said she wanted to buy my life. I thought she meant she would pay me to go away, but I soon realized that wasn't true. What did she mean? What did she mean? <laughs> she explained that if I agreed to sell my life, she would give me a million dollars. She said I'd get the money right now and I wouldn't have to work for it. Did you sign a, a contract? Was there any paperwork involved? Not really. She just gave me the money and said to leave town immediately. <laughs> that was the last I ever saw of her, Mr. Noodle. And you left town. Where did you go? What did you do with the money? I <laughs> went... I went to Atlantic City and played blackjack. I won a lot of money and I kept winning more and more as time went on. I became a millionaire in a few months. How much were you getting paid on Sesame Street? A thousand dollars a week. So you're telling me that you've been working for free for the past 30 years? How do you feel about that? <laughs> That's $4,000 a month? Did you have... Any investments? Did you put any money away? <laughs> Elmo, please. No, I gambled it all away. I guess I didn't think I would live that long. Do you have a family? Where's your family? My mom passed away a few years ago. My dad died a couple of years after that. They were both in their 70s. Why, are you going to kill me? Please. No, I'm not going to kill you. Ah, I'm just going to hurt you real bad. Ah. Unless I need to. I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll just lock you up in a room and throw away the key. Okay, okay, do whatever you want. Just don't hurt me. Good. Put in the back. Get in the back of the fucking squad car. No, get in though. Am I a detective? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can get away. <laughs> We're in a cave in Antarctica. Get in, get in the back of the squad car. Get in the back of the squad car. I took him to the police station and locked him in a cell. I called in a couple of detectives to help me interrogate him. They brought in a camera crew to film the interrogation. We began to question him. Elmo. Have you ever done anything wrong? Have you ever stolen anything? Ever committed a crime? No, I haven't done anything like that. I don't understand what you're talking about. Sure you haven't done anything wrong? You're stolen a candy bar? corner store Cute little shit it's 
stole something from someone, cheated on your taxes, faked your income tax, committed a fraud? No, I haven't done any of those things. You ever lied to anyone? I point the bright light into his face. Like, beep. No, I've always told the truth. You ever cheated on your wife? You ever lied to her? You ever betrayed her? You ever spoken badly behind her back? Just send it, send it. <laughs> no, I've never done any of those things. You have any enemies? <laughs> yes, I have several enemies. Can you name them? Sure. I have a few people who hate me. One person in particular hates me very much. Who is that? His name is Jim Henson, and he runs a company called The Muppets. Bullshit. You are a part of The Muppets. I know that, Elmo. I know that. He's a part of the Muppets. He's part of the same group that made all everybody else. All, they were all created by, by the Jim Henson Company. Bullshit. You're part of the Muppets. You're a puppet. I know you're a puppet. You're a fucking puppet. I'm not a puppet. I'm a real human being. I'm not a puppet. Prove it. <laughs> not a real boy, are you? You can't prove it, can you, Elmo? Okay, okay, I'll prove it. Look. Here, look at this picture. He pulled out a picture of himself and showed it to us. <laughs> this doesn't prove anything. We are gonna need far more. We're gonna need lo we're gonna need more evidence. What else do you want me to do? I want you to do the same thing that you did in the picture. What? What are you talking about? See where your arm is? That look on your face? Do that right now. He did what we asked. He stuck his tongue out and wiggled his ears. He did a bunch of other stuff too, but I don't remember exactly what he did. It was pretty silly. See, I'm not a puppet. I'm a real human being. I'm not a fucking puppet. Okay, okay, okay. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. But he doesn't. The cookie monster is here to testify, Elmo. That you are a puppet. The Cookie Monster is lying. I'm not a puppet. I'm a real boy. We believe you, Elmo. Now I'm going to let you go. We take Elmo out of the interrogation room and let him go free. He leaves the station and heads back to his home in Brooklyn. We watch him walk down the street. We follow him. As he walks away, I turn to the tech detectives and say, That was easy. What do you think, Kermy? I haven't been talking like that the whole time. I think we should inter interrogate every single Muppet in America. We should bring them all in for questioning. Who is <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pimp? Mr. Pimp. <laughs> Like a, like a Dr. Pepper ripoff guy? <laughs> oh no, this, we're just good. Why would we be going after this guy? He's not even a Muppet. No, no more National Archives. All right, new story, new story. And do I love toast. Crispy edges. Buttery surface area. The smell of baking bread. You can really put anything on toast and it will be good usually this is yeah let's go a piece of cheese check sliced tomatoes check yum peanut butter yes please jam hell yes honey duh it's like a blank canvas that you get to fill with whatever you want that was way, that was just what I wrote, but five times better. I've been on a toast only diet for several years now. Following the diet guide, just toast. I seem to have much more energy. 
My hair is shinier than ever before, and I'm totally happy with my life. Now, I'm in my apartment, eating some toast, when I hear a knock at my door. I look through the peephole and see my neighbor across the hall, Mr. Fitz, standing there. I open the door and let him in. Hey, Mark, he says as he walks into my apartment. He looks around, taking in the living room. Nice to see you again. Thanks, it's nice to see you too. I offer him a seat at the table and my freshest and my fresh toast I had brewing the last few hours. What brings you by? He sits down looking at, out the window at the view. Well, I wanted to tell you something that happened at work today. Oh yeah, what did you hear? That you were fired from your job. Well, I was. But why would they fire you? Not because I killed someone. You what? Yeah, you didn't know? Well, I guess I'll tell you. A little while back, I worked at a place called the Midnight Sun. I was an assistant manager, which means I did all the dirty work. I got up early to clean the store and make sure everything was stocked and handle any issues that came up during the day. I also made sure that everyone who worked there had their schedule, paychecks, and benefits. Okay. One night a couple months ago, we were short-staffed, so I had to stay late. It was already after 11 p.m. when I finally left the building. As I was walking home, I noticed a man who looks suspiciously like my boss, Mr. Fit. Walking towards me. I thought maybe he was just going home from work, too, but I decided to call out to him anyways. Mr. Fitz, I yelled. Wait up! He turned around and walked over to me. What's up, Mark? Is this really you? Ah, yeah, what are you talking about? This isn't the way you normally walk, sir. You always take the long route home. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've been having some trouble with my knees lately. Yes, I could tell. Are you okay? I'm fine. He obviously was not fine. So I offered to carry him. No, no, don't worry about it. I'll be fine. I just think I need to rest for a bit. I helped him into his house, and once inside, I saw that he had blood all over him. I asked him if he needed help getting cleaned up, but he told me to go ahead and leave. So I went back outside and called 911. When the police arrived, they took him away. How did I kill someone? About two weeks later, I was called in to meet with my boss. I was told that he was going to fire me for causing him to lose his job. I protested, telling him I didn't do anything wrong, but he wouldn't listen. He kept shouting, blood. He kept shouting, the blood. And pointing at me. Finally, I gave up and accepted my fate. A few days later, I got a letter from Mr. Fitz thanking me for helping him. He said that he was grateful for my assistance and that he was going to give me a raise and a promotion. Blood. <laughs> I declined and decided to quit on the spot. When I told my neighbor, Mr. Fitz, he told me that I was crazy for losing such a great job and that I should have done everything I could to save it. But I knew that I couldn't risk losing my job because of something I did accidentally. So here I am. Unemployed and eating toast. Mr. Fitz walks into the midnight sun and I see him sitting at a table. Wait. This is like, are we going back to this moment or something? I approach to shake his hand. And greet him, but he doesn't respond. Mr. Fitz, are you okay? He turns to me and says, I'm fine. Are you sure? I lean over. To see if he is okay. And a few toast crumbs get on his shirt. He is furious. He becomes enraged. Who did this to me? Who spilled toast on me? I don't know what to say. I look around the restaurant and notice that there's a waitress, a cook, and a busboy. I think... Because I'm too embarrassed. I think it was the cook. He has been making... Pizza. Back there. Where is she now? 
I don't know, he ran off when you started yelling. Find him now! Sir, I don't think you should yell at us like that. What's his name? Calm down, Mr. Fitz. Don't you calm down me. Find that guy and get him out here or I'll do it myself. All right, all right, all right, I'll find him, I'll find him. I find the cook in the back and have him follow me back to Mr. Fitz's table. Here's your pizza, sir. Get out of here now. Uh, I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm the only one who knows how to make pizza. <laughs> only I know the secret recipe for a perfect pepperoni. You're lying. You're trying to trick me into letting you go. No, I'm not. Then prove it. How? By giving me the secret recipe. Cook reaches into his pocket and pulls out a large a, a piece of paper that has been crumbled up. On the paper is a list of ingredients. This is the secret recipe. I wrote it down so that you won't forget it. Give it to me and I won't fire you. Fine, I will, but you better keep your word. <laughs> Why do you think you can fire somebody in a different place? The cook hands me the recipe and I walk back to Mr. Fitz's table. Here you go, Mr. Fitz. Thank you, Mark. Okay. I'm very grateful for your help. No problem for you, Mr. Fitz. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Mark. I return to my station and tell the others why am I a cook? I notice the cook laughing. I wander over to the cook's station and ask what is so funny. I just wrote down three I just wrote I wrote down I wrote down how to make rat poison. What? I figured since Mr. Fitz is a rat, I would give him the recipe for rat poison. What are you talking about? He's a rat, I told you. What do you mean? You remember when I said I had to write down the recipe for that rat poison? Well, I used my finger to write it down. You wrote the recipe for rat poison with your finger? No way! Well, I can't believe you did that. That's horrible. What do you mean, horrible? Well, you could kill someone with that. Like, really? How? It's easy. Just <laughs> mix it with water and drink it. You're joking. No, I'm not. If you do that, you'll die. I run into the lobby. To find Mr. Fitz about to drink out of a glass of water. I grab the glass of water from him and pour it on the floor. Hey, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? You almost poisoned yourself. Why did you stop me? Because you could have died. I don't want to see that happen. You saved my life. No, I didn't. Just wanted to... Yes, I did. I'm what? <laughs> Elaborate. If you hadn't stopped, you would have died. So you're saying that you don't care if I die? Of course not. Why would I want you dead? You understand what you just said? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I know you didn't. Don't worry. <laughs> I forgive you. I have my job back. Sure, no problem. I return to my station and resume my duties as assistant manager. I look at my watch and realize that I'm late for a meeting. I rush out of the restaurant and onto the street. As I walk by Mr. Fitz, I notice he's turning green. Are you okay, Mr. Fitz? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. He stumbles forward and falls to the ground. He hits his head on a lampshade and starts bleeding. <laughs> Mr. Fitz, are you hurt? No, I'm fine. <laughs> he gets up and walks over to a trash can. <laughs> he, he pukes up all the food. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
What the fuck? He pukes up all the, all the food he ate at dinner. I have to get out of here. The music is making me so fucked up. It's so stupid. <laughs> he pukes up all the food he ate at dinner and then collapses on the ground. I rush over to him and sit him up. Mr. Fitz, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I take him to the hospital where they determine that he is internal bleeding. They tell me they don't, they, they might not make it. It's just the fact that, like, why would you get up and then go to the trash can? <laughs> like, this is so fucked up. Ugh. I ask the nurse, what kinds of vitamins? They are giving him in his IV. She tells me they are giving him vitamin K. Vitamin K. Yes, vitamin K helps your blood clot. Without it, you would bleed to death. You mean he might die? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. I tell her to give him more vitamin K. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, you can donate some of your own blood. Okay. Take as much of my blood as you need. She takes some of my blood and gives it to Mr. Fitz. I thank her. No, 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 no. He seems to have some kind of reaction. His skin turns blue and he stops breathing. <laughs> Help! I scream. The nurse rushes in and begin resuscitating him. After a few minutes, he comes back to life. But he's still blue. What's going on? I ask. His heart stopped beating for a few minutes. What do I do now? You need to keep pumping his chest until he wakes up? Oh my god. Isn't he awake? <laughs> you need to keep pumping his chest until he wakes up. I continue to pump Mr. Fitz's chest and after a few minutes he opens his eyes. Mark? Mr. Fitz, what happened? I don't know. I was just walking down the street and suddenly I blacked out. Mr. Fitz, you ate rat poison. What? I know. I made you eat it. I'm sorry. Why would you do that? I wanted to get fired, but I didn't do anything wrong. I know, but I couldn't let you get away with poisoning people. I don't understand. That's okay, neither do I. It was just a gut feeling. The chef was trying to kill you because of how rude you were. Wait, I never said anything bad to him. Yes, you did. I didn't. Yes, you did. And also, you called me a rat. Wrong person. All right, so now he's gonna do the thing where he gets up like in the movies and like, I'm done with all these things in me, right? The nurse runs in the room and puts them back in. <laughs> You're not going anywhere till we get these IVs back in. Fine, but you better put them back in soon or I'm gonna find the chef. The chef walks in with a bouquet of flowers. Hi, Mark. Hello. I brought you some flowers. Thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Fix walks over to the chef and punches him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> What was that for? The chef asks. For calling me a rat. You punched me and now you're going to jail. No, I'm not. <laughs> he rips out his IVs again. And lunges for the chef. Stop! I scream. Oh, you want me to stop? Yes, please stop. Sorry, I forgot to mention that I'm a vampire. What? I watch in horror as Mr. Fitz digs 
his fangs into the chef's neck. Ah! I scream as I watch the chef turn into a bat and fly away. What are you doing? I'm killing him. Why? Because he tried to kill me. You can't do that. Why not? Because it's illegal. Then call the police. They won't help you. Mr. Fitz turns into a bat and flies at full speed into a window. The window breaks and he flies out into the city. I watch in horror as Mr. Fitz continues to fly through the city and eventually crashes into a building. He hits the ground hard and dies instantly. I rush over to, find, to, to him and find that he is dead. His eyes open. Wake up! I shout. I can't. You have to wake up. You're dead. No, I'm not. He opens his eyes. He closes his eyes. He opens his eyes again. You're not dead? I don't know. Why did you try to kill me? I thought it would be funny. You're a sick man, Mr. Fitz. I hover over him. Small few crumbs from my toast breakfast fall directly into his mouth. Breadcrumbs? Yeah, breadcrumbs. What are they doing in my mouth? I put them there. Why? Because I wanted to see if you would eat them. Mr. Fitz sinks his teeth into my neck, but there is no blood, only- wait, no, not even no blood, only garlic flavor. Whatever. You see, when one eats garlic toast every day, <laughs> seems to come in handy against vampires. What an awful sentence. You taste like garlic, Mr. Fitz says. Yeah, I know. Why? Because I eat garlic every day. Really? Yes, really. His eyes lock mine, we both stare into each, other, in, into each other's very soul. He realizes what has happened. He will now die from garlic vampire poisoning. He tries to escape, but I grab him and bite him in the neck. He screams in pain. Stop, what's wrong? You're not a vampire anymore. Let's see. The amount of garlic I eat, I actually can reverse vampirism. How? Oh, by drinking your blood. You mean I'll live? Yes, I'll save your life. I'll pull up my knife and stab him in the stomach. What? I hold the knife in place and then start to cut his stomach open. <laughs> I remove his intestines and throw them into a garbage can. I take out his liver and slice it up into pieces. What the fuck? I then take his heart and throw it into the trash can with the rest of the organs. I take a deep breath and inhale the blood that is in the garbage can. It tastes horrible, but it works. I feel alive again. Wow, that was gross. Yeah, it was. Do you know how long it took me to get this organ back inside of you? No, I don't. About two weeks. Two weeks? Yes, it was that bad. I pull out my knife and cut off his head. I put it in the garbage can next to his body. You're a murderer. I'm sorry. Why did you do that? Because you tried to kill me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. This is the most realistic VR experience I've ever seen. I agree. Can I use this to make a game? Of course. Thank you. I exit the booth and walk back to the office. Hey, what did you guys think of the demo? I ask. It was amazing. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Good, good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting with the investors. Okay, bye. I walk over to my desk and sit down. My phone rings. I answer the phone. Hey, it's me. Hi, it's Mark. Listen, I got a call for- I just got a call from an investor. He wants to talk about the game. Okay. Okay, I'll be right there. I hang up the phone and look at the clock. It's already 3 p.m. I rush out of the office and head over to the meeting. 
I arrive at the investor's office and knock on the door. The investor answers the door and invites me in. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me today. I'm glad you could make it. I'm sorry I'm late. It's okay. I wasn't expecting you until 4 p.m. We sit down in the conference room and wait for the investor to finish talking to someone on the phone. He hangs up and looks very upset. Seems the investors do not think Vampire Chef VR will sell more than eight copies. I'm sorry, but I don't think we should invest any money into this project. Why not? It's too risky. What do you mean? He pulls out a graph. This is a chart of all the games that have sold for over one million copies. So, see, Vampire Chef VR has only sold 7,500 copies. 7,500 copies, that's it? Yes, that's all. I look at the graph and notice that all the other games on the list have sold hundreds of thousands of copies. But why? Well, it's simple. Most people don't like vampires. In fact, I bet most of those who bought the game are children. Children? But I'm 14 years old. Wait, what? 14 year olds don't buy games. They play them on their phones and computers. I don't understand. I'm sorry, but you don't have the right demographic. What if we made it a mobile game, took out the blood, and replaced it with a match three ex a match three game where you periodically clean up a house or a garden with points from the match three game. But that wouldn't be a VR game. Yes, it would. You would still be using VR. You would just be playing on a different screen. I don't know. You could hold up two copies of the game in front of each eye. It's the same. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I don't know. I just don't think it would work. We'll, we'll see. If you're interested, give me a call tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. I <laughs> lunch forward and bite his neck. <laughs> he falls to the floor and I take his heart and throw it into the trash can. I take a deep breath and then exhale. I turn around and see the investor staring at me. Who did I do this to? Who did I do that to? I just saw you bite his neck and then take his heart out of his chest. Oh, I was just showing him what happens when you don't listen to me. I leave the office, head home, and walk into my apartment and sit down on the couch. I look at my computer and realize I need to do some work. I take up my laptop and plug it into the wall. I bite the computer's neck and pull out its brain. I put the brain into a jar and then put it in my fridge. What are you doing? I'm working. I put the computer into a VR headset and I begin to work. All right, I'm going off the rails. Yeah, this one's over.